Does working long hours for little money, clinging to the illusion of job security, and looking forward to a three-week vacation each year, and perhaps a stupid pensions after 45 years of hard work sounds tempting to you? Yes. In that case, you don't need this summary. For everyone else, let's dive in. Takeaway number one. Rich people buy assets. Poor people buy liabilities. My house is my greatest investment. My house is a liability. If your house is your greatest investment, then I feel sorry for you. If you want to be rich, this is the main thing that you need to know. It's that simple. Well, why aren't everyone rich then? The equally simple answer is because people in general don't know what an asset is. Let's test your knowledge. You recently bought an iPhone. Is that an asset? It isn't. Is your Mercedes an asset? Nope, definitely not. Is owning a part of a company an asset? Yep. Absolutely. Is your house an asset? It isn't. Did you get 4-4? Well done. Then you probably already know what I'm about to say. An asset is something that puts money in your pocket. A liability is something that takes money out of your pocket. Let's look at how a rich person acts when making money compared to a poor person. The rich gets their income and straight away they buy assets. They buy assets such as stocks, bonds, and real estate. Now, in the long run, these resources will create even more cash for them in the future. The middle class earns their money from a good job, but the moment they get their salary, they spend it on liabilities which they think are assets, such as TVs, cars, and phones. You might look rich and everyone might admire you for it, but you will never actually be rich practicing this. But isn't it risky to be in the stock market? What if there's another financial collapse? It's funny how people somehow justify buying an expensive car, which is a guaranteed money loss, while they think that buying financial assets is risky because you might lose money. Takeaway number two, the power of corporations. The rich should pay more in taxes to take care of the less fortunate. Taxes punish the productive and support the unproductive. Have you heard the story about Robin Hood? You know that guy who takes from the rich and gives to the poor, inspired by this story? the poor and the middle class invented taxes. The purpose is to create a more equal society where everyone is included. The problem is that the rich, they're too smart for this. And in the long run, instead of taking from the rich and giving to the poor, the effect has become more like taking from the middle class and giving to the poor. Rich people are too smart for the system and they find all types of ways to protect their hard earned money. One way is corporations. Corporations are good for two things primarily. First and foremost, it allows you to pay less tax. The number one spending of the average household is taxes. It isn't uncommon for people to work between January and May for the government. People often pay up 40 to 50% in taxes. People tax before they get their salary, when buying things, and even when they die. Warren Buffett, one of the wealthiest men on this planet, is famous for paying less tax than his employees. What a corporation allows you to do is to pay for expenses before paying taxes. You're also allowed to deduct VAT from the sales by the same amount as you acquiring. This effectively allows you to buy stuff for as low as 50 of the original price. For instance, an expensive dinner together with your wife could be bought through your company and be half as expensive as for those without a company. Just kidding. Don't do that. That would be illegal, as the dinner has nothing to do with your company. Again, don't do it. I want just kidding. I never advised you to do it. The second thing that corporations are good for is to protect yourself from personal lawsuits, which could be devastating for personal finance. With an LLC, you are protected from such risks, and the downside is limited to your company, not your personal money. For an example, if you're a shop owner that is selling wine, a group of thieves raids your shop and steals everything. Your cash, your best wine, and your super hot cashier. The family of the cashier decides to sue you for being irresponsible. Who will announce free wine outside the shop? Surely it's you. You lose in court because of your carelessness, which would force you to file for personal bankruptcy if you were without a company. In this case, though, you had one, and the lawsuit is limited to the company. Takeaway number three. Stop focusing on your income and start focusing on your assets. Study hard to get a good-paying job. No, study hard to buy the company. Robert Kiyosaki's poor dad had a PhD, but was struggling with money. His rich dad didn't even finish high school, and yet, he had something. His poor dad studied so many years just to get a few hundred extra in salary every month. On the other hand, his rich dad used those years to start acquiring assets. 
The rich focus on their asset column, while everyone else focuses on their income statement. I find this to be an interesting topic. If the average person were to get a pay cut by two, he would be angry. On the other hand, if he loses two in the stock market, which is his assets, he shrugs it off by blaming bad luck or bad asset managers. Yet for some people, it's a worse situation to lose two of their assets than to lose two's tune of their assets than to lose two. Salary levels are taken personal, while asset levels are not. This is a common issue for poor people. Start to take responsibility of your investing decisions. Takeaway number four, don't diversify with too little money. When it comes to money, just play it safe. No, learn how to manage your risks. There is no reason to diversify your portfolio if you only have a small amount of money. If you want to become rich, you must first be focused. Look at the top three richest people in the world. These are rankings from 2023. Jeff Bezos, net worth, $211 billion, owner of Amazon. Elon Musk, net worth, $180 billion, owner of Tesla and SpaceX X. Bernard Arnault, net worth, $211 billion, owner of LVMH. Don't do what the poor and middle class do, which is to put their few eggs in too many baskets. Instead, focus and put them in a few focused ones. If your savings are small compares your annual salary, I think this is especially true. Aim to get a yield that will have an impact on your life and go for diversification as soon as you've acquired wealth that will be tough to earn back through your daily job. In finance theory, it's argued that diversification reduces risk. But I would argue that risk is a result of uncertainty, which in turn is the consequence of a lack of knowledge. Stay focused and you will have time to gather more information about each of your investments and in turn reduce your risk while keeping a high potential. Takeaway number five, financial literacy will protect you from poverty. The love of money is the root of all evil. The lack of money is the root of all evil. Money is a form of power. What is more powerful is financial education. Money without financial intelligence is money soon gone. This is the reason why famous people like 50 Cent and Mike Tyson have been filing for bankruptcy, even though they've earned big numbers. One of the reasons why the rich get more rich, the poor get more poor, and the middle class struggles in debt is because the subject of money is taught at home, not in schools. Many of us learn personal finance from our parents. This means that if your parents aren't rich already, you need to start getting advice from somewhere else on how to do it. There are four parts of financial literacy that you should focus on, according to Robert Kiyosaki. Number one is accounting. Accounting is the ability to read numbers, reading numbers from an annual report or from your personal bank account. Number two is investing. This is the master of money making. Number three is understanding the markets. At least you should understand the basic rules of supply and demand. Number four is the law. Understanding the tax advantages and personal protection provided by corporations. Don't be afraid to spend your money on education that will improve your knowledge and develop skills necessary to overcome your weaknesses. The author spent many thousands of dollars throughout his life on seminars, books, and so on. And guess what? The returns from these investments were incredible. Arrogant people often find this hard to do. They already know everything and rather talk about what they know than try to learn something new. Listening is more important than talking. In a nutshell, Takeaway number one is that you must buy assets to start generating passive income every month. Takeaway number two is that a corporation is a useful way to protect yourself from losses and to be able to pay yourself first, not the government. Takeaway number three is to start taking responsibility of your own investing decisions. They're even more important than your salary. Advice number four is that you must invest in a focused manner to grow a large fortune. Finally, number five is the advice to start educating yourself in personal finance. Focus on accounting, investing, and understanding the market.